her leadership tonight. So a few months ago, we stood over there just in that hallway. Together, we proclaimed Providence uh, as a climate job city, the first. And this, what happened tonight, is exactly what we're talking about, right? So we're, and we're just getting started. So we are creating a 2040 deadline to update the municipal and school facilities. It's a win-win-win, right, triple whammy, because we have, one, Providence doing its part to meet the goals set in the state action, uh, state act on climate plan. Two, we are creating healthy, safe, sustainable buildings for the public, for our students, for our teachers. And three, we're creating a mandate to require registered apprenticeship as our path to get there, right? So alongside our city's other commitments to local hiring, to MBE and WBE use, all together, that means that we're investing in the workforce and helping turn a one-time job into a life-changing career for Providence residents. So I want to thank everyone who's here tonight from the Climate Jobs Coalition, our partners in environmental justice work and in labor for your partnership. We also really want to thank Mayor Smiley and his team for uh, their collaboration in getting us to this point. And now I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Councillor Andra and thank her again for her leadership. Woo! Thank you all so much. I'm really, really excited. You guys, you know how excited I get. Um, <laughs> this legislation to pass for the second time tonight. As Council President Miller already said, this is a big win, 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 win. It just keeps going. Um, this is the first concrete way that we are implementing our commitment to be America's first climate job city. Um, this is also a specific recommendation in the climate justice plan. So we're, we're implementing both at the same time, guys. Um, just as a reminder, it requires all municipal buildings to be carbon neutral by the year 2040 with strong labor standards and apprenticeship programs to ensure that how we do the work is as important as, as, as getting to carbon neutrality. We're not just going to build the same bad economy we have now, frankly, but with a little green color. We're going to do it right this time. Um, also of note, immediately there will be no new gas hookups for municipal buildings. A few people have asked, why not all buildings in Providence? And to that I'd say, I would love to. We would, I would love for us to be able to do this for all buildings in Providence. We're precluded by state law from doing that. So I also encourage all of my colleagues to support the um, legislation that our friends at the Green Energy Consumers, uh, who are behind me, are putting forward um, at the State House to try and um, push for all electric buildings statewide um, for all new construction. Um, but I just also want to point out that this is a way that we, though, can lead by example not only in meeting our climate goals, but improving the health and safety of our buildings. These are school buildings, these are municipal buildings where our workers work day in and day out, and we're removing harmful, polluting appliances and other really harmful things from those buildings and making them a safer place for our kids and, and our, our city workers. So this is an important and necessary step to achieve our climate mandates, but it's only the first of very many steps we're gonna to take together. So I'm excited to introduce um, our next speaker, um, who's going to talk about uh, a whole bunch of things and our partnership together in climate jobs. And I think it's, it's Mike going next or Pat? Mike or Pat, come on up! <laughs> Miller. Uh, I love how unmessaged we are. Win for climate, win for justice, win for jobs. This ordinance helps to tackle climate change at the scale and pace that science demands. It requires utilizing registered apprenticeship programs. It expands good paying career opportunities for communities that need them most. And it also ensures that this work is done with the kinds of wages that lift people out of poverty. It facilitates 21st century facilities for province children and families, including our schools and our recreation centers. And it further aligns the policy priorities of the city with the Providence Climate Justice Plan, a plan which was developed by Providence frontline communities. There is no better time than now. With historic investments from the federal government, the biggest federal investment since the New Deal of the 1930s. These are investments that the city will be able to utilize for the purpose laid out in this ordinance. And we know that this ordinance is just the beginning. We have more work to do, and we look forward to working with the city council and the mayor's office to usher in a just transition for the city of Providence. And with that, I welcome my friend and brother, Pat Crowley. Thank you, Mike. Well, you know, listen, it's very easy 
for bodies like this to pass a resolution, put it on a shelf and let it collect dust. It's pretty easy for mayor and mayor, mayors across the country to take an ordinance like this and just say thank you very much. This city council, led by Council President Miller, led by Council Anwar, and every single member of this body has shown that this city council, this city, is going to lead the way to a transition to a real different economy in this country. They took action, they showed leadership, they showed determination, and damn it, we're going to make this economy something that we can be proud of in Rhode Island, and the Providence City Council, and the City of Providence, and the Mayor's Smilers Administration is going to lead the way. Thank you very, very much. I'm so proud of your efforts. You all deserve a round of applause, and we're going to make sure that this is just step number one. We're going to keep going and make this happen. Thank you. Shout out all of the counselors who uh, stayed with us for tonight. We have uh, Councilwoman Anthony, Councilwoman Vargas, we have Councilman Espinal, we have the President Pro Tem Pichardo, I'm not missing anyone, Councilman Sanchez, Councilman Gaspar, Councilman Peterson, Councilman Reyes, Councilwoman Harris, and Councilman Vargas. Um, I'm going to sign this that we just passed tonight. It truly was a collective effort. It's been um, many months of conversation. Um, and we look forward to continuing to work with uh, Mayor Smiley in, in his administration and moving this forward. So thank you all so much. Any questions for us? Yeah, with the state mandate being set at 2050, does this ordinance supersede the state mandate, or where, what's the timeline in terms of what you can enforce? Yeah, so great question. So the state mandate is that the, we're going to be carbon neutral uh, economy wide by 2050. This is just us implementing our portion of it as fast as we can. And so there's no, like, you can get there early. It's totally fine to get there early. And in fact, for us to meet the statewide mandate, some things are going to have to be done earlier. And so if this is something we can do now, we have to do it now. Um, and so it's just the, the city leading by example to get there. So say, like, I don't know if, if PPSD is, like, carbon neutral or not, but say, like, an old school building wasn't carbon neutral and they're dragging their feet on making carbon this neutral. This will be required by 2040. 2040, okay. Okay. Um, do you have any sense of how many buildings in the city are already carbon neutral, or is there a lot of work to do across the board? Well, one of the first things in the ordinance, as uh, Councilman Andra wisely uh, laid out, is to actually do an inventory. Okay. So to, work, to have city leadership and the public property department do an inventory, see uh, where we're headed. And, you know, a lot of this was um, in the school side. People were sort of saying, like, oh, well, we, we want to do this, right? There's a lot of, this is like a... a very much coalition of the willing moment. Um, you mentioned this is the first step. What is the second or third step coming? What, what, do, you, what do you have on tap? Hold tight, Steve. There's so much coming. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Just, just a preview. Just ask them. It's fine. That's I'm fine. not going to scoop myself, but we're more on the way. All right. Cool.